everyone! As you may have noticed, we just had two travel days in a row, so it was time to get back up over 14,000 feet. And with that, day six, let us get back to our favorite part of this summer project, hiking 14ers. To make up for lost time, we set out for not one, but two summits this day. Of course, hiking 14ers usually means waking up ridiculously early, and this day was no exception. Good morning! What day is it? Day six. six. I think so. And yes, we are indeed hiking today. This will be the first day that we are doing two summits. Castle and Conundrum. It's about 4.30 in the morning, <coughs> and we're headed off to the trailhead because I'm kind of slow. So, should be fun. We headed up a rough four-wheel drive road for a few miles before deciding the miles would pass a little bit smoother on foot. So we parked, got out, and hoofed it for a few more miles on the rough road. All right, so day six, we're headed up our third and fourth peaks. It's gonna be kind of a long day for me. <laughs> we're doing Castle and Conundrum. Yeah, should be fun. Anyway, sun's coming up, so we're gonna get warm soon. All right. These early mornings can be tough, but they're totally worth it. Seeing the beautiful Alpenglow is always worth kind of sleepwalking for the first few miles. Eventually, we reached the end of the road at just below 13,000 feet and caught a glimpse of the rest of the route ahead. All right, so we just finished hiking for about 2.6 miles on a rough Jeep road, and that brings us here, where we finally uh, get off the road and on the trail. And we're gonna go up Castle, and then reverse over here to the right, to Conundrum, and then come back to Castle, and then come back down. Our first obstacle was a 500-foot climb up a steep, hard-packed snowfield. Typically, we'd use micro spikes to get up something like this, but we left them back in the truck, so we just took our time and made sure we didn't slip. From the top of the snow, we had just under 1,000 vertical feet left to reach the summit of Castle Peak, but things got a little bit steeper. In just under three hours, we reached the summit of Castle Peak, our third 14er of our project. It was a gorgeous day, so we probably lingered on the summit for well over 30 minutes before we finally got on our way. All right, we are on top of Castle Peak, which is officially peak number three of our <laughs> summer 14er project, and we're getting ready to eat. and then come back over here. Woo! On top of Castle. Um, my legs are kind of tired, and that was the third peak. So I'm not totally looking forward to going down and then coming back up again, but I will do it, because I said I would. <laughs> Next up was a quick, loose descent before beginning our 300 foot climb up 14er number four, Conundrum Peak. Almost to the top of Conundrum. About time. This peak has two summits, which actually leads to quite the Conundrum. Yay, we made it! We are on the top of what we believe is the summit of Conundrum. That's the Conundrum. There is a summit over there, so we went to that one, we and did. now we're standing here on what my Gaia GPS app tells us is the summit. But we did both just in case, so we definitely got it. Cheers to the conundrum of what is the actual summit of conundrum. Cheers to doing both anyway, just to make sure we got it. When it came time to descend, we had two options. First, we could go back up and over Castle Peak and come down the way we had come up, or we could slide down this giant snowfield that was right below us. I'm pretty sure you can guess which one we chose. 
There were quite a few people heading down this way, and the terrain is pretty loose. So, we just had to take our time and not kick any rocks loose, which ended up being the hardest part. I wasn't really sure if Mandy would be on board for the snow descent, but I'm sure glad she was. This descent probably saved us close to two hours on a return trip, and was way more fun. As it turns out, sliding down snow in short running shorts is cold. Like, really cold. But it's also really fun. And it can also be really painful. We chose to go down the snow, and uh, I got a bloody butt now. So. Kendrick's butt is bloody. In my left cheek, not this one, but my other left cheek, uh, got a hole in the shorts, so unfortunately I won't be able to wear these again. And we have a couple, I don't know how many miles. A couple miles. Two, back three down. miles of walking down. We had parked the truck right next to a beautiful waterfall before starting our hike. So when we returned to the truck, it was the perfect time to feature our water feature number seven. All right, so we just finished our hikes up Castle and Conundrum Peaks. And one of the best side effects of hiking is that you end up going places that you wouldn't normally go if you didn't have a reason to go there. Which also means you find really cool things like this waterfall that you wouldn't normally find. We don't know the name of the waterfall, but it is on Castle Creek and it's beautiful. You can't miss it. At this point, most people would probably be content to call it a day, but not us. We had an 80 mile drive to the town of Gypsum ahead of us, but on the way, we were able to stop along the side of the river and spot our sixth featured wildflower. So our day six flower is the cattail. Now you don't see these too often in Colorado, especially if you're like us and spend most of your time higher up in the mountains. They usually grow in June and July, so here we are in mid-August and they're still here. Maybe that's a sign of the uh, the long winter that we had here. The cattails are always pretty and add a nice foreground to photos whenever you're shooting lakes and ponds. Next, we headed to Gypsum to visit our eighth feature distillery, 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits. And as luck would have it, we were able to meet up with my brother and sister-in-law, Jason and Emily. So it is day six and Kendrick and I just finished two peaks. So we are ready to work on the distillery portion of our tour. And by wonderful coincidence, my brother Jason and his wife Emily were in Glenwood Springs, so they decided to come join us. So we're gonna start out at 10th Mountain. The Gypsum Tasting Room has a cozy feel to it. We were greeted by Jeremy, the bartender slash assistant distiller, and you can tell that he was in the middle of working on something in the back. But he welcomed us and shared his love of 10th Mountain Spirits. So we're at 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirit Company. Got our start up in Vail, uh, Colorado back in 2013 is when we started making it. Named after the 10th Mountain Division of the Army that got their start up at Camp Hill up near Leadville on 24. Uh, one of the founders of our company, his grandfather, was an original member of the 10th Mountain Division. Uh, so we kind of get our namesake from them. And given their history here in the Valley of getting, uh, getting started up at Camp Hale, played a big role in the Italian Alps in World War II, and came back after World War II with all this mountaineering and skiing experience. They basically started up the ski industry in North America, um, made the mountain lifestyle what it is today. We felt it was only appropriate we named our mountain whiskey after. During this project, the whiskey and spirit flights have pretty much been my go-to at each distillery. This place was no different and had great spirits across the board. And a neat pour of whiskey, preferably rye, has usually been my go-to, and it certainly didn't disappoint. And go figure, this was the bartender's favorite too. Uh, so my favorite, personally, is 10th Mountain Rye Whiskey. Some notes of dark fruit, a little cinnamon finish. So tasty. After trying a few spirits in the tasting room, it was time to head into the back to see where the magic happens. We also got to try a few new products coming out straight out of the barrel. 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits was right up there with Marvel Distilling as one of our favorite distilleries on the project so far. 
A lot of distilleries in Colorado are still fairly new and don't have more than one whiskey product, if any. It's nice to have a few different whiskey offerings to choose from. We had one more stop before calling it a day. Another distillery. Stoneyard Distilling was the ninth distillery in our project, but this one was just a little bit different. All of their products are distilled using beet sugar, which essentially makes them a rum, but apparently they legally can't be called a rum since they don't come from cane sugar. Who knew? This distillery seemed to cater towards people who like flavored spirits, as almost everything here was either flavored or infused with something. If I had to pick one, it would probably be horchata. Maybe that's because we just spent months drinking liters of horchata flavored water in Mexico. I don't know. <laughs> probably. Typically, rum and flavored spirits don't really catch our eye that much, but Stoneyard Distilling did have a few interesting flavors going on. They did earn a few extra points by offering a cocktail paying tribute to one of my favorite books. It is the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster, which Jason ordered and downed in no time. This is the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster from the Douglas Adams book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm pretty excited right. to see what it's like. I'm gonna have to tell your wife what you just did. Oh, she was in the bathroom the whole time. She has no idea. <laughs> Well, day six was certainly a lot longer than it took Jason to down that cocktail. Our project total so far, four 14ers, nine distilleries, six breweries, five coffee shops, six wildflowers, seven water features, and five scenic drives. It could just be me or the two days of rest, but these two 14ers seem to be a little bit easier than the previous ones. Also, I was really happy to end the day at a distillery with family. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to follow along with the rest of our 14er project by subscribing to this YouTube channel. You can read more about each day and find more information about our photography workshops and guided backpacking trips by going to mandyleephoto.com. Also, follow us on Instagram at mandyleephoto and at Kendrick Calloway. So, here's to eight more days exploring colorful Colorado. Love and light. So, uh, how's that butt cheek of yours? Guess I'm just glad I didn't turn the other cheek, or both of them would have been bloody. <laughs> <laughs>